Hi folks, I'm Max from GalaxyS5Root.com. I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through uh, how to install SafeStrap and how to use it to install a custom ROM uh, on your AT&T Galaxy S5 or Verizon Galaxy S5. Um, the instructions are nearly identical. I'm using AT&T Galaxy S5, just the files are different. Um, so first, uh, SafeStrap, what is it? Basically, um, it is basically a custom recovery for those of you with locked bootloaders. Now, Every Galaxy S5 in the world has unlocked bootloader out of the box except for AT&T and Verizon uh, because AT&T and Verizon doesn't want you to root your phone and install custom ROMs. Um, they like to lock it down and not give you uh, freedom of choice. But we can get around that by using a hash, codes, a hash code, XDA user hash codes, a safe strap recovery, uh, which goes around um, around that. So let me go ahead and how to sh uh, show you how to install it. First, before we begin, you will need a rooted uh, Galaxy S5. Um, right now, current root method is towel root. So go ahead and root it uh, using that. Um, and also, um, you will want to install BusyBox. Um, BusyBox is required if you want to install the safe trap. So go ahead and go download a BusyBox app. There's a bunch of them. Um, I've got this app here, BusyBox app by Stefan Sterickson there. Go ahead and open that app and go ahead and hit install button here all right and it's going to install busybox this is required so you can install um you can install uh safe shot recovery if you don't install this you will not be able to install it um oops i have i've installed a bunch of, you can actually install it a bunch of times so it is installed you're good to go Next, what you'll need to do is obviously download the latest version of SafeStrap. And also, I'll show you how to check uh, whether you have the latest version of SafeStrap. So I put the links on my site so it's easy for you to just follow my video along. Just go to galaxyS5root.com. Um, you'll find up at the top, uh, one of the menus should be uh, Strap4, Str SafeStrap4, AT&T Verizon Galaxy S5. Go here, and if you go to the download section here, uh, there should be download uh, safe drive recovery for AT&T or Verizon. Um, so I have AT&T Galaxy S5, so I'm going to go to the S uh, AT&T Galaxy, Galaxy S5. Now you'll come here, and uh, it'll show you um, what uh, what the project status is. Now make sure what you see is uh, the version number ND3. What that is is basically your build number. Um, to check this, go ahead and hit the home button and go into settings and go to about device and then go look at the last three letters of your build number. Now make sure you download the correct version uh, that matches the last three letters of your build number. So ND3, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go back here and you'll see that the latest version is ND3. So I'm gonna go ahead and download the ND3 version and you should be able to find the download link somewhere down here now in the future, there might be new f new versions, but right now, as of this video, there's only ND3, so I'm gonna just go ahead and use ND3. Um, you can use a mirror or XTA downloads. I'm gonna use XTA downloads, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and download the correct version. And also, let me show you how to read the version number. A lot of people don't get uh, this part also. Um, so basically, look for ND3, and then for the version number, get the latest version. So B01 must be the first version, and B03, Obviously the latest version as you can see in the timestamp. So I'm gonna go ahead and download the latest version. All right, go ahead and download the latest version. And um, there should be a direct download link for XDA. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that button. And this should take like five seconds uh, at most. And it is trying to download. All right, uh, give it a second here. There we go, starting download. It's downloading. Um, it's not a huge file, it's like a really small file. It's just the APK file. Um, once it's downloaded, we're gonna go ahead and install it, uh, and then run SafeStrap, uh, install SafeStrap, and then run it, and then actually install the actual SafeStrap recovery. Uh, for some reason, it's... Oh, you know what, I've already downloaded. Um, so let me go ahead and use the previous version. So once you have it downloaded here, um, I've got the, uh, I've already downloaded here, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the previous version I've downloaded. You might get install blocked 
Um, if you see that, go to Settings, go to Unknown Sources, check that on, hit OK, and hit Install. All right, this will actually install the SafeStrap application, but did not install the actual SafeStrap recovery. So go ahead and open the app. All right, and make sure you hit Grant, and make sure you do see Super User Request. I hit, a, I hit Agree there, and you'll see that it's not installed. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit Install Recovery. All right, and what this will do is basically install the latest version of SafeStrap recovery. Now, in the future, if you need to uninstall it for some reason, you can go ahead and rerun this application, hit uninstall recovery. Also, when you do upgrade a safe start recovery, go ahead and uninstall recovery first, and then install the recovery. Um, so that's pretty much it. And once that's, that's installed, uh, every time you reboot, all right, let me go ahead and restart. Every time you reboot, there's an option uh, during boot where you can get into SafeStrap. Um, so I'll show you how to get into SafeStrap, uh, very easy. So I've rebooted, and you'll see this splash screen uh, where you can hit recovery on the left. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit recovery uh, there, or you can hit continue and that will boot your phone. All right, once I am in here, I'm gonna go ahead uh, and show you some of the stuff you should do. So the first thing you have to do is make a backup ROM, all right? A lot of people forget this. Now, a backup ROM can take about around two gigabytes, um, so make sure you have enough space. Also, you can use a micro SD card, um, so let me show you how to do that. Go to backup here, all right? And then choose your storage. If you're using a micro SD card, you can go ahead and choose that. I don't have it inserted. Or if you don't have one, you can go ahead and use internal storage. All right. And once you swipe, it will start backing up uh, everything. You can do it just like the way it is. And this will back up everything, um, your settings, your apps, your app data, everything except for your personal uh, files, such as you know your videos of your baby, um, personal photos you took at Golden Gate uh, Bridge. Uh, on your latest trip to Europe, it's not gonna you know back those up because it's gonna be huge. It's only gonna ins uh, back up your your ROM, your whole operating system with uh, along with your settings. So go ahead and swipe, and that will back up everything. And when it's done, um, and then go ahead and install this ROM. Now you can also, um, if it takes up too much space, you can go ahead and back it up to your internal storage, and then copy it to your computer. So you always have a backup copy. And anytime you want to restore your ROM, if something goes wrong, you can go ahead and hit restore here. And I've actually backed it up. And uh, you can go ahead and uh, hit the button there and uh, swipe to restore. And this will get you back on whatever ROM you, you backed up. But obviously, I've backed up stock ROM here. And let me go ahead and show you how to install ROM. Now, there's a bunch of different ways. If you go to boot options, you can actually create a bunch of ROM slots. Now, the bad thing about this one is that um, you can only create a partition data size up to like 2.5 gigabytes, which means when you create a uh, ROM slot and use your ROM there, um, you may run out of space. So what I suggest you to do is don't use the ROM slots um, unless you're kind of testing out a new ROM or something. Uh, but just make a backup ROM and use the main stock ROM slot. So I wouldn't mess with the boot options too much. Um, just go ahead and install the ROM. First, you'll need to do a wipe, most likely. Um, you may not need to, but if you do make a backup ROM, you can try without a wipe. Um, also, you can do it after installing a ROM. But the standard way of installing a ROM, you'll want to uh, wipe data. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and wipe. This will wipe everything except for your personal files. Um, it's gonna wipe your uh, settings, app and app data. If you wanna back up your apps, go ahead and use Titanium Backup App before you do this. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do Factory Reset. All right, that will delete my data uh, partition, which is my settings and my apps and my app data. Um, next, go ahead and ins go to Install. Um, and go ahead and choose the ROM you wanna install. I'm gonna go ahead and install Vision X ROM. Um, you can actually install for, for AT&T Galaxy S5. You can install all of the uh, G900F international ROMs. You can also install any T-Mobile ROMs. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and install this Vision ROM. And I'm gonna confirm Flash. All right. 
and this is installing. And some ROMs do have Aroma Graphical Installer where you can choose various different options. Uh, perhaps you know some uh, apps you don't want to install, you want to install, you can customize all of that. But this one doesn't. Um, so I'm going to simply install it and uh, reboot. And you should be on the new ROM. And anytime you want to go back or somehow you end up in a boot loop, you can always uh, restore the stock ROM you backed up. So always have one good copy. Um, you know That way you don't ever have to unroot with stock firmware, uh, which is actually really hard to find uh, right now for the AT&T Galaxy S5 and also the Verizon uh, S5. Uh, but I will be back when this is completely done. All right, that took another minute or two. Uh, once that's done, you can go ahead and reboot system. Um, that's all there is to it. Um, and also, if you end up in a boot loop for some reason, um, after installing ROM, one of the first things you can do is go to advance, uh, no, sorry, go to wipe, and go to advanced wipe, and uh, for, uh, wipe system, or format system, and wipe, and then reinstall ROM. I'm not gonna do it because then I have to reinstall my ROM. I'm gonna simply reboot system here, and uh, give it five minutes here, and we should have the new ROM booted and uh, you've learned. And here you can hit continue now, uh, or you can wait 10 seconds and it'll automatically boot. Um, now you've learned how to, ooh, look at that pretty cool uh, 3D boot animation. They don't like Samsung. All right, pretty cool boot animation. Anyway, now I showed you how to install a custom ROM using SafeStrap Recovery. Uh, again, the important thing is you use the correct version of SafeStrap for the build number you have and also make sure you use it for the correct version of the S5 you have. If you have AT&T Galaxy S5, use the AT&T um, SafeStrap Recovery. If you have Verizon, use the Verizon SafeStrap Recovery. Uh, again, make a backup ROM, first thing you should do. And there's a bunch of people out there already using SafeStrap, and uh, I should have put the guide out first. Um, and they've already messed up their phone. They can't find the stock firmware. I'm trying to locate it right now. I can't find it right now. Um, you don't want to get there, so make a backup ROM and then install any custom ROMs. As long as you have that one backup, um, you will always be safe. You will always be able to, um, you know, restore easily to your previous ROM. And, uh, you know, that way you don't have any downtime if you're using it as a daily driver. Um, you know, if you have important calls coming, you're not going to miss those. Um, so definitely make a backup ROM. And you don't have to keep it on your phone. You can just put a micro SD card. All right, here we go. I boot it here. I'm going to go ahead and log in here uh, real quick. And you can see that I have a brand new uh, custom ROM. This is actually a 900F ROM and running fine on my Galaxy S5. Of course, I'm not getting any data. I think because I don't have my SIM card inserted. Do I have my SIM card inserted? No, I don't have it. That's why. Um, but uh, it should pick up APN automatically. If it doesn't, you can always um, manually insert it. I do have full instructions on that over at highonandroid.com. Just type high on Android APN settings manually on Google and you will find my uh, complete video tutorial on how to set uh, your APNs for your phone. And here we go, okay, two weeks are coming on. And if you go to about device, now you'll see that your model number has changed. Do not worry, don't, don't freak out. The important thing is the baseband. Uh, this baseband still tells you that you have AT&T uh, S5 modem, or if you're using Verizon, uh, well, for Verizon, you only want to install Verizon uh, S5 ROMs, by the way. Um, so everything looks like it's 900F, but um, you know it, everything works fine, so you should be all good to go. Uh, anyway, that was how to use SafeStrap Recovery on AT&T and Verizon Galaxy S5 to install a custom ROM and also do make a backup ROM uh, and backup your apps using Titanium Backup App. And I will see you guys soon. And if you guys have any questions, you can always reach me on Twitter, Facebook, or Google+. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to my email list at galaxys5root.com as we have a ton of good stuff coming. And I will see you guys soon. And thanks guys for watching my video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and the subscribe button below here uh, to get more cool ROM reviews, tips, tricks, and more. And also check out video of the week over here if you haven't yet. And as always, uh, stay... Yeah.
on Android.